was going to say it so gently. It's okay. I'm going to really try to say it correctly. That's fine. All right. At least you're trying. We're rolling. Oh, we're rolling? <laughs> My bad. All right. We have uh, welcome to the, you always do the Tulsa Uncut podcast. Um, I wrote your name down, Bahar Ranj, Ranj Bar. Correct. I was trying to really nail it. You did great. You yes. did great. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> this is a lovely Bahar. Bahar, tell us a little bit about yourself. What do you do? Um, I'm a realtor in Tulsa, Oklahoma, and recently switched to a commercial. Still do residential, taking care of my uh, past clients and center of influence. Uh, but my main goal is just uh, put my feet into commercial. How are you liking it? Uh, it's challenging. It's definitely and not like residential. There's a lot of um, you know ups and downs into it. Mm-hmm. Um, but I love challenge. Mm-hmm. Um, my whole life has been just challenged by different things. So even moving to United States was a huge challenge for me. And what age? You- um, I came here 2001. I was 25 years old. Wow. From where? Uh, Iran, Tehran. So major cultural shock. Yes, not just that. Uh, my background is computer engineering. So imagine oh. from engineering to sales, what a huge jump. Why, did you, wow. why, why didn't you stick with computer engineering? The reason is um, I had two kids. So I couldn't work from like eight to five. Okay. And I had to uh, change my schedule somehow to be able to take them to sport, to mm-hmm. music class, school, I mean, help them with their homework. So it wasn't something that I could pursue. And um, I was in IT back in Iran. Okay. And um, I was the first woman in IT. Really? Wow. Yes. What were you 1997. doing? 1997. Wow. What were you doing in IT? Um, I was just um, working uh, for Ministry of Health and and Administration. So that was the first um, organization that they brought internet to Iran. And we're helping the doctors to just uh, have an access to internet, to data, and all those information. So it was interesting for me to just have to teach them WWW, what does it mean? I bet so. Yeah, and I uh, had to go to the uh, hospitals and clinics and just, um, you know, start dial-up internet. Mm-hmm. And wow. Uh, yeah, and most of the times there was a conflict between soundboard and uh, modem. Yeah. So, so how long have you been in real estate? Um, 2013, joined okay. Keller Williams, but uh, got my license back in 2004. So what is the biggest challenge that you are seeing with commercial? Um, It's just, um, it's like they don't let you in. It's a very closed uh, community. Oh, really? Yeah, they don't want you in Hmm. unless (laughs) there is some benefit for them. I I don't know. It just, it is hard. Mm -hmm. And um, for example, Keller Williams, there are not many commercial agents in our office working hour is only me mm-hmm. and south office we have three or four other agents too so not so many but our goal is one day to have our kw commercial building in tulsa oh very nice yeah. do you have to have do you have to have any special licensing to go into no commercial? i mean you can have your own license i mean the uh, uh, residential license is enough but the education that you need is mm. completely different so you have to dig into it and okay. figure out which way you want to go. You cannot have an act, I mean, just have a hands on every single one of them, like multifamily, right. retail, uh, industrial, or lease. So you have to choose one branch and pursuing that area because you cannot honestly do it all. Do all no. You know, we, you know, at Titan, we serve residential and commercial Mm -hmm. and so I think you know when people ask me the differences it's it's they're two different beasts you know residential is very emotion and feeling and all of the 
the what we call fluff, if you will, brokers opens, open houses, all yeah. the things and all the fun. And commercial is very serious. Yeah. We're well, locating families and all yeah, that yeah, kind yeah. of stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And to me, commercial is way less emotional. It mm-hmm. is very facts, True. figures, numbers, end result. Like it's very cut and dry. True. Um, so it's it's just a different beast. It matches my personality and my background too, because yeah. engineering it just works with numbers. Yes. You know, mm-hmm. I rather to just work with numbers and come with the solution rather mm-hmm. than just dealing with emotional feelings yeah. and try you know, to just solve a problem. In uh, commercial, you don't have a problem. There's just numbers. You yeah. go through them, is there, either it's working or not working. Yeah, so it's all business more. Exactly. Not, not as personal. That's true. Yeah. And uh, residential, even though I, I do my best to help my clients, it drains me most of the times. Mm. I could see because that. Because it's my person, I mean, my personality is just do the best. It doesn't matter who they are. I mm-hmm. mean, buyers and sellers, um, if they are friends or I don't know them or just, just, they just reach out to me, I do my best and it sometimes it drains me. Yeah, I so, can see that. Yeah. Whereas yeah. the numbers, it's just a number working it's just game. Like, is it going to yes. have a return on the investment or not? Exactly. Like, what are we doing? Well, exactly. there is another little unknown secret, which is why Bahar is here. So um, you want to dive in? You want to figure that out? Yes, let's dive in. Bahar, tell us a little bit about your your secret well it's not secret. really that big of a secret but tell us about the non-for-profit that you run basically is how i like to say it. i mean you do run it it's it's very intriguing give us the name and then tell us a little bit about what it is and how it got started sure uh so i am foundation uh it's a non-profit organization 501c3 that we started uh back in 2008 so there was only three of us. Uh, one of, I am one of the co-founders. And throughout the years, we started growing and getting bigger and larger. And um, each year we are helping uh, between 1,700 to 2,000 families every year. Helping them. Helping them and um, just we have two different type of clients, inside clients and offside clients. Okay. Inside clients there are people that they are staying at our transitional housing. We have uh, we built eight units back in 2018. And uh, offside clients are people that they reach out to us. They are behind on their um, you know electricity. They are behind on their rent. Uh, they lost their job. They don't, um, their car is broken. They don't have money to fix it. And so if they don't fix their car, they cannot work. They cannot provide. So we help them with those uh, small items. Hmm. And sometimes they just lose their job, they are behind on their rent. A month or two months, we help them out too. Or we provide food stamp for them, or we provide um, however they mean, like babysitting, sure. if they need to go to work or go to college or you know start. Um, or if their house burned down, we help. Yes, yeah. uh, with furnishing uh, all those um, house that they need it. I mean, we, we know so many people and they uh, honestly just grab a phone and call them. They do their best to, you know, help us either through um, donation through money or they know families that they are willing to donate their uh, household items. Okay. So who is the foundation? Like, who is it for? Who are you, you serving? What are you guys doing within that foundation? We started with only helping women and children. I'd used women and children. Okay. And But right now we are helping families. Okay. Uh, and uh, Zaro Foundation is one of those foundations that um, give us grants every year and help us with, uh, we only have two employees. The rest of us work in volunteer. And one of them is our case manager and the other one executive director. Okay. So the money we uh, the grants we receive from Zorro it goes to our uh, to the salary to our executive director and our case manager. Oh, wow. Okay. So Bahar had told me about this kind of years ago, and what I found most intriguing about it is um, when they were taking women and and families of these women who were escaping from um, domestic abuse and violence, they house them and basically give them a safe house, if you will for the mother and the children and completely create a home for them, a space for them, furniture for them, therapy for them, 
education and really, I mean, all the way to the point that you guys were doing like job coaching and mm-hmm. helping get them job mm-hmm. placement for up to, was it a year or two? Two years. Two years. Wow. Yeah. yeah. So when you guys acquired the real estate, is that kind of how you got into the commercial side? Uh, no, it, it no. was a just, uh, yeah, it was a different um, story that I can share with you later. But um, the reason, uh, I mean, uh, believe it or not, buying the land to build that uh, apartment complex, it was my first transaction. Really? Wow. Yes. Okay. I, I, th- I had a feeling it was somehow related to you. Yeah, it was my first transaction. Yeah. And, and uh, the commission I received, I donated back to the uh, foundation. Oh, wow. And um, so I was, I just, I didn't have any knowledge. I didn't know how to communicate, how to just make a deal. I just grabbed the phone and called the guy and said, hey, I have a cash offer for you. And the house, uh, the land was listed for $179,000. And I, he said, sure, what is your offer? I said, it's $50,000. And I said, okay, uh, sure, bring your offer. Ouch, I don't even know how to write an offer. <laughs> <laughs> So, yeah, and I got back to office, got help, and wrote an offer, and they accepted. That was just, you know, a miracle. Yeah. It was just wow. a miracle, yeah. I mean, it's, it's God works in that way. Mm-hmm. When it's and it's a great location on 51st and Yale. Imagine that. Wow. So how yeah. did this foundation get started? We started um, with just one um, op- uh, apartment that we um, rented. Okay. And we put three ladies in there with their house mom. Um, it didn't work that way. Mm-hmm. And since we didn't have that much money because we just started, we didn't have money, and uh, we couldn't help them more. So we started doing fundraising. And uh, during our fundraising, we had a lot of success. So we were able to just uh, rent it separate mm-hmm. uh, apartments. Okay. For years and years, we had um, we rented apartments, but we had our, our small office with just had a meeting every single month to figure out how we can help. But we continue just raise money, and we had great donors in our community that helped us. Uh, we bought the land with the um, money and donated money, and then we started um, raising money to build it. So Home Creations um, helped us to build that uh, apartment complex okay. at the cost for us. Wow. And um, so right now we have eight units and office. In our office, we have a small clinic that, um, you know, the, um, the people that, you know, um, they need counseling. Mm-hmm. Uh, there's a counselor actually that comes over there and see them and talk to them and help mm-hmm. them out. So one of the rules that people, when they stay with us is, they have to go to our counseling. Mm-hmm. They have to meet regularly with our case manager and executive director. So we can monitor them how much they have improved and how much help they need in which criteria. Sure. And it's just not them, it's just their kids too. Right. We provide a lot of classes like cooking class, like um, stuff like that for them. Life skills. Yes, and um, a lot of uh, fun classes actually for the kids. That's awesome. uh, like painting, like um, ma- um, baking, even for the kids, like mm. a cookie baking, mm-hmm. and um, so they can have uh, either I mean fun and just learn something on the other uh, side. How do That's people awesome. get involved with the organization? So uh, we have so many volunteers. I mean, uh, in our website, we if you um, if anyone wants to just help us. Um, either be a board member or be a, just a volunteer or be an advisory board. So they can go to our website and put their information and say which area they want to help. Okay. And what mm-hmm. is the website? Uh, SriyanFoundation.org. Okay. And we will put that up at the end for yeah, sure. Yeah, for sure. Um, so what is a story, can you, I mean, without names or anything, a story that impacted you? Because you're a mom, you've mm-hmm. got two beautiful children. Um, Thank you. And just can you share a brief story with us of something that where where the Soraya Foundation came in and changed it? Soraya Foundation. um, So that's a um, different story. Why I I started getting involved in that. Um, I guess uh, some of you guys know about what happened. I mean, I was only five years old in Iran and it was our new year. 
and our new year starts uh, March 20th so in the middle of you know just the winter time mm -hmm. um, my mom took me uh, to just um, buy sh shoes for me for new year and there was an old guy that was selling match um, right on the street and it was a snowing so um, when I saw him, he was shivering. He had barely some clothes on. He was just selling matches. I asked my mom, can you help him? He's, and she said, how do you want me to help? I said, can we take him home? And I said, no. she said, no, I can't. He's an stranger. I cannot take him home. I said, mom, he's an old guy. Mm -hmm. What he can do? My mom said, no, I can't. I said, then how else we can help? She bought all the matches, but I knew it wasn't enough. And she started telling me, don't worry, mom, probably she, she, he has uh, families, they will come and pick him up. I said, mom, did you see those blankets? He doesn't have anyone to come pick him up. So the whole, um, we passed, my, the whole night I was crying. I was in tears, how I, could, how I could help this guy. So I made a promise to myself when I grow up, I'm gonna be a doctor because I believe only doctors can have a lot of money. <laughs> so I'll be a doctor and I'll have my own uh, building and on more, uh, in my own hospital. So I'll pick those people that they really need help and they cannot get it from anywhere else. And I will monitor them, I'll watch them and I'll help them till the last minute of their life. So that was my goal to uh, accomplish. And when um, opportunity came across me uh, about Surayam Foundation, I just jumped in. Mm. I said, this is the area that I want to help mm -hmm. and I want to get involved and I want to be there. So we started it and I started as a treasurer. Imagine I had no idea what treasure is, what they do, what yeah. it needs to be done. So I had to teach myself. I mean, every single board member, they had to learn how to just you know do it, do Run it. Foundation, yeah. so we started from I mean, honestly scratch nothing we barely had the money to file 501c3 which was 750 dollars <laughs> wow yes wow that's incredible yes. and imagine right now yeah. and so now your five-year-old heart is you know we four. talked in one of our episodes yeah. about before about um making agreements with yourself and that was an agreement that you kept yeah, it was an agreement that you kept with yourself of helping others in need, which is amazing. Yes, it is amazing. I mean, helping others is my passion. Yeah, I mean, I mean, even in real estate, there are so many uh, clients that they really need help. It's not just showing houses. Yeah, mm -hmm. and uh, so I'm willing to help them however I can. So I mean, seeing the result is more interesting. When they, I, when I see they, they are happy. They found what they wanted, and. Um, the kids, um, they're just full of joy when they have their own room or yeah. their place. It just brings so much joy. It's yeah. mm, It has more value than money. How do you guys um, supply the homes with furniture and things like that? How every time we need, um, uh, so every time that one of our clients move out, they have a chance to take all the furnitures with them. Oh, wow. mm -hmm. um, like uh, bedding, mattress, um, uh, household items, whatever they need, they will take it. So we will put it on a website or social medias. Okay, our uh, one of our units is empty right mm -hmm. now. We need, uh, we need furnitures. So we put a list of items we need, and most of the times w we already just have it in less than 24 hours. Wow. And uh, we, uh, we also have it in storage. When people, they donate uh, stuff, we will keep it there, and when we need it, we'll just replace it. Wow. And recently, Amazon has been a great help. They're just donating a lot of stuff. They're donating oh, stuff? Oh, yes, a lot wow. of stuff. I mean, boxes. That is really yeah, awesome. Yeah, it is really awesome. And mm -hmm. with like uh, cleaning stuff, like, um, you know, um, there's stuff that you cannot even imagine in the, the, in those boxes. It's fun, actually, go through that. <laughs> <laughs> She's like, and it's kind of like me getting my own package, but not. Yeah. <laughs> you just get to check it out. Yeah. The mystery box. So we put like a, uh, like a store in our office. Our office has uh, like three, four uh, different doors and they are just, you know, they're not connected to each other. Mm. So one of the uh, <coughs> rooms, we put it like a store, all of those items, we receive like canned food or 
um, hygienist or whatever. We put in them uh, with the label in mm -hmm. the cabinet so people, they just can go there and grab what they need instead of going to store for like a um, small items. Right. You know. yeah. They can just get it from. They just can get it from there. That is amazing. Cool. How yeah. are how are families selected? They have to fill out an application okay. and based on their needs and criteria will go from there. Okay. So even me as a vice president, I don't know the name of our clients. Oh wow. Yeah. It's very um I mean protected. Yeah, we have well, to Well, because a lot them. of it is under circumstances where they are they are trying to escape a traumatic situation or a dangerous situation. So, I mean, all of those things probably yeah, have Yeah, their done. protection is our priority. Yeah. And um, so we know them by case number. Okay. Not um, name or anything or background. I don't care what the background is. Yeah, that's good. We just there to help them however we can. So for women who might be finding themselves in that position, um, we know that domestic violence is real, and, oh, and yes. really not just women. That men, I mean, men are subjected to it too. But you'd be surprised at children. Really? Mm -hmm. Will you? Do you guys help men or just women right now? Uh, right now, we help both. Or, okay, both. Mm -hmm. But our priority is women with children. Okay. If they are in danger, I mean, they have children, they are our priority. So what would they do? Like if someone's watching the show and is like, you know what, I'm in that situation and I've, I've chosen to stay here because I have nowhere to go. Um, <laughs> Judy calls. Welcome to the world of real estate. No, I'm just right. kidding. I'm so sorry. Um, so true. Don't, don't be sorry. We, listen, we all know real estate. It doesn't stop. So for those of you that are watching... Um, and you think that real estate is, you know, <laughs> such a leisure job that yeah. that was probably a call. Yeah. Sorry. Sunday, Sunday at 3.30. 3 I should have turned it off. She's uh, still there. I forgot. Um, so realtors do not just sit by the pool drinking, <laughs> you know, margaritas. Anyway, Never. <laughs> um, for someone who has stayed in a situation where they have felt stuck, those are words we hear. You know, I feel stuck. I'm too scared. I don't know where to go. Where will I take my kids? How... Where, where am I going to, I'm not, I don't have anything. I can't take anything. Cause oftentimes when they leave those situations, they're going to have to just leave with what they have. Correct. So how do they, I mean, how do they get help? I mean, yes, they fill out the application, but is there any, like if they feel that they are in imminent danger, what do they need to do? Um, they, um, they have different options. Either they can reach out to uh, the church that they are going to. Okay. Um, for us, they can go to the mosque and ask for help. And because there are the safe areas that people, they know if they can go, if they go there, you know, there's someone to right. help them. And immediately someone will reach out to us. Okay. And uh, we will find a way to help them. If our um, buildings are full, as I said, we treat them as our off-site clients. We rent a place for them and help them to stay there as uh, long as um, they need. So our next project, because we were transitional housing, but right now we are working on our next project. We already put an offer on a land, two acres land in west of Tulsa. So we are going to build 25 units and um, that would be permanent housing. Oh, wow. Yeah, those people that they are leaving us, like they are handicapped, they are, I mean, blind, or they, they don't have any other place to go. Mm -hmm. You know, even if they leave us, wh who else is gonna protect them? Who else is gonna take mm -hmm. care of them? So we came up with this uh, solution, we need a permanent housing too. So it's not gonna be that many, it's only 25 units, but it's a start. Right. Yeah. That's so th wonderful. this will be anyone who needs safe housing? Mm -hmm. Yes. And are they one bedroom, two bedroom? Uh, usually uh, we're going to have one bedroom and two bedrooms. Yes. Okay. The floor plan and everything is ready. And uh, so. Wow. And so when amazing. does that start? When do you start breaking ground for that? We teenager? have uh, applied for federal housing grants. Okay. Because it's not just the building. After we build, we need staff. It's mm -hmm. not going to be like what we have right now. It's a serious thing because they need 24 hours. Care Someone, yes. Mm -hmm. So we uh, need um, a staff. We need uh, money for them, salary mm -hmm. for them. So we know that federal housing has a lot of grants available for this type of situation. So we apply for it and still working on it. As okay. soon as we get uh, approved, we will 
start. And then people can start submitting their applications online, I guess, for Correct. that service. And how right. long are they going to be able to stay there? Is it permanent? Permanent. Oh, yes. wow. Yes. Wow. That is incredible. Yeah. You know, I look at places kind of like um, the old promenade and things like that. And so often I'm like, why are we not making these places, like turning them into literally like safe havens? Exactly. And creating a space for whether it be homeless, veterans, you know, why aren't we making em- these big empty buildings into places to help others who can't help themselves? Right. You know, and, and that's the thing, like, okay, they're homeless because uh, they're alcoholics. Okay, but they don't have the resources to get help. Right. Like, the first thing is every day they're waking up trying to figure out what they're going to do to just get through that day. Right. Let alone the fact that the wonderful elements, especially here in Oklahoma, are ever-changing. Right. Right. You know, and so I just, it's crazy to me to see. It's a serious problem we have. And it uh, it hurts me that uh, the government, it's not serious about it. Mm -hmm. You know, individuals like me or like other people, they have to just put their sleeves up and start doing something. Mm -hmm. Um, We don't mind, but we don't have that power. We don't have that money. We don't have that resources. Mm -hmm. And we have to dig into it and imagine how much time we have uh, to spend to find out what is the best way right mm-hmm. instead of just they have all those resources they can just provide it for us and they can just reach out to us hey you guys have like been in this um, business for almost 15 years you have all those experience this is what we can do to just you know help you to improve it mm-hmm. we have to dig into it if, if they would help you to help others, yeah. it's it's not that they have to come and do the work. It's just exactly. the funding of exactly. it. Exactly. Imagine help. I'm a mother, f- I mean, full-time job, two uh, kids. One of them is in college. But anyway, um, I'm working volunteer. So some people, they tell me, how can you manage your time? How can you? Mm-hmm. I mean, we all have 24 hours. How can you do all of those? I said, watching less TV. And mm-hmm. going to social media less <laughs> mm-hmm. and, you know, try to manage my time. And yeah. uh, but there is this, I mean, it's still I have only 24 hours. Yeah. And I wish we had more resources available so we could just uh, help more people. So if you're listening and you can be a resource, please go check out the website. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> Definitely. Yes. Um, so you have a kid in college. Mm-hmm. How's that going, Mama? She's in Chicago. Yes, Loyola University. She's getting two majors. She's wow. my smarty pants. <laughs> <laughs> What's she studying? Uh, political science and environmental policy. Oh, wow. She wants to get into law and politics. Wow. wow. So she's going to yes. become an attorney at yes. some point? Yes. That is incredible. How's Very she ambitious. liking the Chicago weather? Oh, she loves it. Really? She, I mean, she really loves it. She's told me she's not going to come back in Tulsa <laughs> after she graduates. It's hard Looks like you have some planes to get on to yeah. go visit her. It's uh, heartbreaking that after like 18, 19 years, they are that much independent. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It's just that just means you did a good job, though. You oh, know? Thank you. I mean, it is. Well spoken from a father. <laughs> As Our mommy hearts are breaking. Caden <laughs> just started driving, and I'm like a nervous wreck. I was telling Bahar earlier, I'm like, I'm that annoying mom. I don't want to be. I, I, I yeah. really don't want to be, but I am. Um, every time he's like, Mom, I'm going to run here. I'm like, how long are you going to be? What are you going to do? And turn your radio down. Ugh. And then I'm watching yeah. 360 like it's a Netflix show. Like I'm literally like glued to it. Isn't I'm like, that the app that tracks like, yeah, your how fast he's yeah. going? And oh it gives gosh, him like dings funny. if he slams the brake too hard or does. Yeah. So yeah. I'm like obsessed with Life 360. I'm like, no, no, I don't have time for TV because I'm watching 360. That's funny. Hopefully he doesn't watch this episode and knows that that's what I do with my time. He's not. Okay, <laughs> he's not going to watch. <laughs> you don't think? No. <laughs> he's going to get used to it. Yeah, I hope so. Yeah, I hope so, so it just comes after you start trusting him. Yeah, hmm. you you will get used to it. Yeah. So back to the foundation. How many families um, on? I go back to the domestic side because I know a lot of people who have been in that situation, mm-hmm. and their biggest crush or or excuse is I have nowhere to go. Um, how many families? Do you think, like, as a whole, women escaping domestic violence, is? do you guys have, like, a percentage that you guys have helped since? 
Um, as I mentioned earlier, every year we help between 1,700 okay. to 2,000 people, including children also. And so we, there are so many families that they just stay with us for a couple of months. They don't okay. need more, than, more help than that. They find another place or they have a family, they can just live with them. Um, so we had like pregnant women that they just needed to be there during their pregnancy. And after that, they could just move on to their life. And um, we have so many successful stories that uh, a mom with two children stay with us and why she was getting her nursing degree. Hmm. And now, I mean, a few months ago, she bought a, her first house. So imagine that. That is incredible. It is. It is, that um, is incredible. It is beautiful when uh, you see how much potential they have, but they're scared because they don't know there's help out there. Mm -hmm. yeah. And um, when they find someone that they know someone, you know, and can help them, yeah. they can reach their potential and uh, help take care of the kids, their family. That's wonderful. Yeah. So I imagine the amount of families or people that you help year to year, I bet that number fluctuates because Correct. sometimes it's a longer term situation. Correct. And the turnover might be shorter. Do you guys generally set a goal for like how many families you want to try to help? Or how do you measure that, I guess? Based on our budget. Okay, so yes, that's all that really matters, I exactly. guess. Exactly. So because even if we, they cannot stay in our buildings, mm -hmm. we can rent a place, safe place for them. But again, it goes back to our monthly budget. So our money, all of them comes, I mean, most of them comes from um, fundraising and donors. So how much they can, um, you know, donate us. I mean, we send letters throughout the years. We have uh, one huge uh, fundraising dinner. And during the Ramadan, which is a holy month, mm -hmm. we have um, two or three different fundraising too. So based on how much money we can raise, uh, we will put it in our budget. Okay. How much money we can spend every month. Uh, for this and, and for like for the food for like housing for like you know just providing um, um, other stuff for them. So none of the money that you raise is none of the money that you raise goes to salaries. That is all for just the foundation. Correct. A little bit of it goes to our executive director. As I said, Zara, Zara Foundation help us a little bit. Sure. But um, we have two employees, but one of them case manager and our executive director. That sounds like a really big order for two. Just two people. I mean, I, I know that they yeah. have the volunteers, but I'm like thinking that's yeah. a lot of people volunteering their time and energy right. and yeah. resources. True. Yeah. We, uh, uh, we have 10 people in our board members. Wow. And uh, we have uh, different committees. Uh, one of the committees is just a specific for fundraising. One committee is uh, for building maintenance. And uh, one committee is uh, for case management okay. because only the case manager cannot take care of all those families. So we will assign um, two families to each uh, uh, board member okay. that they are in case management uh, committee. Okay. So they can work with them um, just, you know, very um, in a close relationship mm -hmm. because most of the times they are not comfortable. They just come and talk to you about their problems yeah. right. but when you make that relationship when you make that um, a trust relationship with them they are more comfortable to just tell the, tell you what they need mm -hmm. and what is their pain what area they just needs to help because most of them they are very shy and mm -hmm. they've been through a lot they sure. cannot even share anything with you yeah so you have to build that trust relationship with them first mm -hmm. so that's why we put like two um, family uh, two families with uh, one case manager case manager person and then um we go from there okay yeah and, yeah wow it it is it's a lot of work you mentioned it's a lot of work. therapy correct yes. they have yes. that's mandatory for yes. your clients they and have to go through that the uh is it one therapist that you guys yes we have one uh, and therapist uh, but if we need um again our uh, executive director decides if they need a different type of therapy, mm. we will send them to that specific therapy. Okay. But um, that um, social worker is just always there to help them. You know? That is incredible. 
That yeah. is so incredible. I love I love that structure of mm-hmm. how it's set up. I think it's that sounds very efficient and impactful. There are so many. I mean, basic things that we as an individual we would deal. Uh, we are dealing with it every day, and we don't know that um, we take. I mean, take it as a grant. Take it as granted. You know, right. mm-hmm. just you wake up, you fix your bed. You know, fix uh, breakfast, and just you know get ready go to work Mm -hmm. and you know you have a routine in your life most of them they don't they don't even know how to start their day it's um it's just not easy so we have to teach them from a to z is that from the trauma and abuse yes okay yes like a lot of the situations would you say that they were in a very like heightened control or is it just mostly it's just mental okay i mean they are not in a right state of mind. They mm-hmm. cannot think better. They just, um, they are victims, mm-hmm. you know. It's not like us to try not to be a victim. For me as a as an uh, immigrant all these years, mm-hmm. um, I've been through a lot too, but I tried not to be a victim. Yeah. So it needs a lot of, I mean, just, you know, strong personality and a lot of, um goal setting or mind setting and they don't even have they don't have it we need to provide that for them like giving them tools in their tool belt that's what we always talk about yeah putting the tools in their tool belt the basic necessities of life what is it pavlov's hierarchy is that what it's called pavlov pavlov Mm -hmm. what is it no that's pavlov's dog and paxton is going to research that (laughs) i should know pav pavlov pavlov's I mean, in what my point was, the hierarchy of needs, yes. right? You Maslow. know. Maslow. Maslow's. I sound so dumb. The Never. hierarchy of needs, housing, food. I, I can't remember how the pyramid works, but I imagine just getting that in order, because how can you think without sure. having those basic things, you know, set? You know, how can people set goals for themselves or even think on those higher levels of, like, being ambitious and salt? I mean, I know just even as putting yourself, you know, in the position as a parent, as a mom, you know, it, when your whole world is in mental abuse or physical abuse, emotional abuse, your every day is surviving and keeping your kids safe. Yeah. So it's like the need so to do all these other things. About. You're like, right. you're in fight or flight. You mode. don't have time to think about yeah. that kind of stuff. Yeah. That's incredible. Yeah. Once a month, um, the, we do inspection. Of the, in the apartments so w- they know that we are going there I mean um, building committee okay they go there and check the filter check there's if, if there's any leak in the house or but their instruction when we go there the house has to be clean the trash has to be out you know simple stuff mm-hmm. that you don't even think oh we need to monitor that yes yes I can't even get my children to do that yeah so <laughs> They Can you just, come inspect my house <laughs> once a month? <laughs> they do their best. So that's that's another lesson they need to learn. Yeah. Sure. You know, yeah. just... Um, Giving them that basic responsibility. Exactly. Mm-hmm. That is incredible. We're not trying to give, give them everything. Mm-hmm. They are there and we are there for them to help them to get back on their feet. Right. Like the nurse that you mentioned. Exactly. Mm-hmm. So that's our goal. We are not just pampering them. Right. They need to get back on their feet and take care of their themselves and their children they say it's what not a handout it's a hand up like Mm -hmm. we'll give you the hand and help you up but you got to get up exactly you got to do your part and um if we realize that they are not willing to do anything again they all i mean they're giving them opportunities like six months or maybe more they are still in the first place that they have been they don't try to get better we have to let them go I was going to ask how you yeah, dealt with that. Because we are, pro- we are there to provide help for the people that they need help and mm-hmm. they want to get help. And um, they want to improve. They want to be better. They want to do something with their life. And this is not our place to just, you know, babysit. We are not babysitting. Mm-hmm. Right. We are helping here. So are there rules against drugs, alcohol, yes. b- bringing partners in, et cetera, et cetera? Yes. Okay. So there is some ground rules that you guys Correct. lay for them to help them with decision making. And it is not just for themselves because for the uh, safe of other uh, neighbors, they sure. have other families they have um, okay. is there. So we need they need to follow some rules. Sure. You know, I've seen in so many cases people who are victims of abuse, whether it's any of the kinds, emotional, all of them. 
they often have, that's their hardest thing um, to overcome is the, the desire or the tendency to go back to bad behaviors. So still trying to fill in those voids with either the same bad behavior choices, you know, whether that be alcohol, drugs, sex, whatever that is, or finding, you know, them communicating with the person who hurt them. Like, you know, do you guys see that? And then if so, yes. what are things that you do to protect from that? Because it does no good to help and rescue them if they're going to keep communicating with the perpetrator or uh, the person who harmed yes. them. We have, uh, we had to deal with that so many times. So um, we will try to advise them, this is not a good idea to do that. You're here to be safe and just work on yourself. And sometimes they cannot, they just reach out and we had, we have to call the police and you know, it's, it's ugly sometimes. It's not. And like have them removed from your facility yeah. or? We, we try to give them warning okay. as many as we can, but if they just keep back to their routine and they want to make the same mistake, we will try, we will rather to give the opportunity to someone else mm -hmm. that they're, they're on serious. a waiting list mm -hmm. and they're serious and they want to do better with their life than someone just tries to stick and be a victim yeah there has to be that willingness and because there's counseling available you know the rewiring opportunity is there but still people have to make a choice to correct choose to accept that help and choose a different narrative but if they want to stay in that narrative then i mean it's kind of on them and they need to realize that um they are they reached out to us to help them but first they need to help themselves mm. We are uh, only there to just make it happen. But right. if they want it, if they don't want it, then there's no point. Mm -hmm. Wow. So do you look back at five-year-old Bahar and say, you did it? Uh, I still have more to go. Still more to go. Yes. What is what is kind of your big, what is your thing? What, is, what are you chasing after? Your um, after, um, as I mentioned, our payment housing. Mm -hmm. So not just 25 units. How many, how many Bahar? Uh -oh, I don't think go. you'll ever be satisfied. Yeah, I don't think so. Yes. As long as I'm breathing and I am uh, healthy and I can function, I will do my best. I love that. I love that so much. Yeah. That's my passion. You can tell that you're very passionate about it. Do you eat, sleep, and breathe it? You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, what can I do next to, exactly. to help this? Um, exactly. Did you guys... Because I know at one time we had talked about the tiny houses. Mm -hmm. Are you, is that still something that you're, or are you kind of like, eh, we're focused over here now? No, um, um, Alison Moore, which was one of the, co another co-founders of the Australia Foundation, she has uh, also different goals. Mm -hmm. And she's a very dedicated mom and... Um, <laughs> the world of real estate. <laughs> I didn't again. know <laughs> So sorry about that. No, um, so she, she came up with the Sunshine Tiny Homes mm -hmm. idea. And uh, actually, she bought the land, 40 acres land. Did in she? Bix, yes. Yay for her. Yeah. And but um, her health condition is a little bit, uh, you know, just she's dealing with cancer, mm -hmm. you know, lead poisoning and knee surgeries, everything mm -hmm. just she happened. She needs to focus on her own healing for a minute. Right now, yes, sure. 2022 wasn't a good year as mm -hmm. far as her health sure. for her. So she's a little bit focusing on that area. As soon as she gets better, our goal is to um, build a um, few tiny homes as a profit so we can use that money oh, yeah. uh, to just be the other. Uh, okay. build another one for homeless people, donate it to homeless people. Because we cannot always count on our donors. And since Sraya and I mean, we are a small community, and Sraya and Foundation gets all the, you know, donation in for the, uh, for the um, organization. So we cannot use one source for two different organizations. Right, right, right. That's why we decided to build some for profit and use the yeah. profit to help this to help, yeah. yeah. We need to hedge other things. Mm -hmm. Yes. To, yeah, yeah. That makes sense. No, I love it. I wish I had Bill Gates' money. 
I mean, don't we all? Don't we all? You know, it's really, we all wish we had it. It's just what you would do with it yeah. is the question. That, yeah. was, a, that was a funny uh, thing. Uh, I was in a meeting and someone asked, um, I don't know if I, I receive like a million dollars a year, what I'm going to do with it? I said, you will give it to me. <laughs> and I will, I will use every bit of it helping exactly. others. Exactly. Yes. Just don't worry about it. Yeah. I know how to spend it. I said, there is no way. How much do you uh, stuff you want to buy for yourself? I said, who said I'm going to buy stuff for myself? Yeah. <laughs> uh-uh. In yeah. your like dream scenario, money's not a factor. What would it be? Exactly. No. What would yours look like? Yeah. Like, what he's saying is like, if, if you did get that money, um, what would what would your dream center be? What would your dream picture be? Like, if you had X amount, there won't be any homeless. That's why. I, that's yeah. I was suspicious of that. Yeah. That's why you'll never be satisfied. You there could have you know homeless. ten thousand doors in operation you're going to be wanting 20,000 yeah yeah so coming from a third world country you still have a lot of opportunity and a great life even homeless people here are so lucky trust me (laughs) (laughs) they still have a shelter they still have a place to go and they can get i mean those churches provide sometimes food for them sure Uh, but in middle east we don't have those opportunities not at all and it's it is not um easy so even though i'm helping people in my own country too you know, try to send money as much as I can over there, buy food, and just uh, there are families that the mother, um, the children, the husband is sick, he cannot work or is disabled or something happened, husband died. And women over there, is they are not as independent as we are here. Mm. Sure. So they don't know, I mean, they, they never worked outside the house. Let's put it that way. So, and they have children, and they, all of a sudden they lost a husband. Mm. So, what are they gonna do? Yeah, right? become very vulnerable. I very would much. And the government doesn't help them at all. Here we have social security. Sure. So we have food stamp. We have a lot of opportunities. Mm-hmm. And still, I'm saying homeless people here are so lucky. Yeah. <laughs> Over there, there, there's none. They're mm. like literally fed to the wolves. Exactly. Like good luck. Exactly. So we try as an individual help them too. And. Do you? There, there are organizations also over there, like Sayan Foundation we have. There are so many organizations over there too. But again, they need to know those people okay. to sure. be able to yeah. get help. Do you still have a lot of family back oh, in Iran? All of them. All of them? Except really? my brother. Okay. Yeah. Is he here? Yeah, he is here. In Tulsa? Yes. Really? Okay. Yeah. Very he nice. came in 2013. Wow. Do you go back very often? I do my best to go every year if I can. And um, I go there, visit my family. And my mom recently been diagnosed with cancer. Oh, I'm so, so sorry. I'm so sorry. Yeah, me too. So I'm trying to just visit her as much as I can. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you should definitely. Yeah. Is What is it over there as far as, do they have a high homeless population? Yes, we have. Wow. We have. I can't like and I'm like it's just so dangerous there in general like it breaks my heart a little you know like just thinking of when to hear you say the homeless people here are still pretty lucky they are compared I mean it, you don't think about that until it's said and then you're like huh you know but yeah. wow true well I I really appreciate you coming on and telling of us a course. little bit about it um if you have any furniture or you have, you know, resources, please consider donating them to the Saran Household Foundation. items, yeah. whatever they have, like broken. I mean, you have like chip dishes. You don't want they them want anymore. Your chip dishes. You know, <laughs> if if your kids are like mine and you have mysterious spoons disappearing and you've only got three now, donate those three. It's okay, um, but just help where you can. You guys take clothing as well. We do and um, bedding. Yes, bedding. Okay clothing, mattress, this is something we always need because oh, mostly mattresses. they live with the mattress and the bedding and everything. And for furnishing, we need mattress again. Okay. And Will you guys come pick them up? Do people yes. have to take them? No, we, okay. we can pick them up. Okay. And um, yes, um, we have trucks also available. And we um, got a new van for Sarayan Foundation. Oh, wow. Um, so we can pick up and we have volunteers to help. 
is uh, every is all the information one would need to like donate on the website yes okay we have a donate button and uh, we all the information you guys need i mean we are open book organization mm -hmm. all of our tax return for last few years is on on our website so wow. people they know the money that they have donated where it has been right and uh, spend it where where did it go how we spend it and so they need to know that we are not getting any dime out of those money yeah yeah. You know, I wish the federal government or even state that that would look at uh, organizations like these that have, I, you know, maybe grade them. Like, look how well they do with the finances. They do a great mm -hmm. job. And then, like you said, you always have to beat down the door and you're constantly probably going through red tape. They should have some kind of organization where they reward um, successful organizations like that. You know, especially if you're super transparent, the money, everything, you're, you're making a huge impact. You should get a phone call saying, hey, uh, you're getting a $100,000 grant because you've done so well. They should do that. Because I, I imagine. Realistically, what they're doing is, I mean, it's helping as a whole. You mm -hmm. know, it's getting homeless or, or abused people into a home, getting them off of the streets, getting them, you know, from committing suicide or yeah. continuing the abuse. You know, it's, it genuinely is helping, but they just have no resources. Yeah, and it just we are limited, very limited. Yeah. And, and it's it's 100 percent the responsibility of, you know, your executive director, whoever is in charge uh, to go get the money. But mm -hmm. it would be yeah. nice if it was reversed. Exactly. Know. Exactly. You're proven. So yeah. and hopefully uh, someday will happen. There are families that they put us on their trust. And if they pass wow. away, part of their uh, will will just, you know, comes to Soraya. And I did the same thing, too. Wow. And besides my children, um, it will go to Soraya. Wow. And um, so my legacy will co get continued. Oh, that's and I believe my son, because he's, um, uh, I mean, he's very much like me. He's very emotional. He's just very much helping other people. I mean, we go on, I mean, just honestly, when he sees a homeless people, mommy, can we go buy some food for him, please? Mm -hmm. So, and yeah, he's, I think he has it in him. Yeah, to carry on the legacy. Yes, hopefully he will. How old is your son? He's 13. I mean, he, he will turn uh, 14 on February 15. Nice. So he too is an Aquarius. Yes. That sweet little Aquarius heart, that's how. So he you'll have a, an attorney at some point? And then what do you suspect he will be? He will if be a businessman. He will really? be, a v yeah, he is good with math, with numbers. Mm. He wants, he doesn't w even want to continue his dad's, uh, you know, business. Mm -hmm. His dad is a home builder. So mm. he wants to just uh, be on his own, have, have his own business. But he wants to have his own uh, Lamborghini. So, <laughs> I mean, hey. Yeah. We've established that. <laughs> you know, uh, Lamborghini was my first, like, when I fell in love with a car, I probably was, like, 13, I thought you were going to say your first car. <laughs> no, yeah, right. No, I had an 88 Pontiac Fiero, kind of like a Lamborghini, but yeah. not. Basically um, the same thing. No, but um, the Lamborghini was my very first car. And yeah. do you know, like, I, so this is going to tell you how dudish I kind of am, was. But I had pictures of Lamborghinis in my childhood bedroom. And I would lay there at night and spell Lamborghini over and over and over and over. You know, like I can spell it. I still can spell it to this day. Like it is, it was always my dream thing. Now I look at them and I'm like, why? They're so tiny. Why did they want that? I'm going to have to crawl in that. But thank yeah. you so much for of being course. on. Um, Thanks for having me. Thank you for everything you're doing. And our thoughts and prayers are with your mother. Thank you so yes. much. And um, I appreciate it. We love and appreciate what you're doing in the greater yes. town of Tulsa. And what was the website again? Uh, Soraya Anna Foundation dot org S U R A Y Y A A N N A dot uh, foundation dot org. Okay. okay. So it's Perfect. it's a little bit hard, but that's I okay. We can spell it. We'll spell it out and make sure it's <laughs> out there <laughs> and in the description. Yeah. That would be great. All awesome. Right. Well thank I appreciate you and your I hope time. you Thanks have for a having day. me. Yeah. All right, guys, thank you for staying and watching Tulsa Uncut. We got to know a little bit more about some non-for-profits here in Tulsa. Um, have a great day, and we'll see you next time. Bye.